remember saying to myself, come on, Paul, you got this, bud. Keep going, bud. Keep going. And I finished the lap with the other kids. On the outside, I kept it nice and cool. But on the inside, I was like, yes, 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 yes. The first time in my life, in my young life, where I just fit in, I didn't stand out. And because of the surgery, things did get easier, but I wouldn't consider them easy. I switched schools again in middle school or junior high, whatever you call it now. I was like, what, 12 or 13 years old. And that's a tough age, regardless, you know, if you had a disability or not coming into a, a new school, being that age, everybody already is in their cliques. They already have, you know, they form, they've been in school together for years. So it's hard to penetrate. So just being a new kid alone, that's a tough age to get into a new school. But I was a new kid with a disability because I walk with a little bit of a limp and I hold my right arm a little bit differently. So it was even tougher for me. And I remember getting into that school and being bullied and teased constantly, all the time, bullied and teased. And on top of this, uh, my mom uh, raised me Catholic. So she wanted me to go to a Catholic high school. So I had to take an assessment test to see where I was at academically. Well, I must have bombed the thing because when I uh, met with the principal and my mom, uh, the principal says to us, well, we're going to put Paul at the lowest level possible and don't expect much from him. He's not, he, he doesn't seem like he's college material. After one test, the, the principal tells, tells us this. So I'm devastated. I'm bullying and teased in school. I, I'm crying in my room, crying myself to sleep, going, why me? Why do I have to be different? Why can't I just fit in with the other, other kids? And I don't know what came over me, but around midway through eighth grade, I was just tired and tired of feeling angry and sad all the time because those are my go-to emotions because of the environment I was in. But I didn't, I knew deep down, those weren't really my go-to emotions. I was just, those was just armor that was put up because I just was not in a good, a good headspace. And at the time, and then I thought to myself, what could I do to distract me from these feelings of, of sadness? I thought, what if I set a goal for myself and I just concentrate on the goal and not worry about the other noise? So I thought, okay, what goal should I set for myself? And at the time I loved baseball. So I set a goal for myself to, uh, to make my varsity baseball team. So I said, okay, let's go. I played fall ball, winter ball, spring ball. If I wasn't doing that, I was throwing a tennis ball against the wall. I was doing this constantly over and over and over again. And the great thing about this, and I know this now, I didn't know this, you know, when I was in the journey path, um, I was sending out a different energy to these kids. I had my shoulders back, my head up. I had more confidence. They could see the confidence shift. So I was, because I was putting out this different energy out, they were putting a different energy back towards me. In other words, instead of bullying and teasing me, they started rooting for me. So my high school career was much different than my junior high career, all because of the energy shift that I decided to change. And it was all because of going after this one goal, of making the varsity baseball team, which I'm happy to say that I was able to make that team. Uh, as a junior and as, as a senior, and it was a, a great, great, great accomplishment. I graduate high school, and I start to really think about what that principal said to me uh, years earlier about not being college material. And um, because through high school, I just mailed it in. I just did enough to, to, to say eligible to play high school because in the back of my mind, I'm like, what's the point? Why waste my time? I'm not college material. Just do enough to get by and, and, and don't waste your time. So that was my mindset at the time. But I, but now I, I, I thought about that baseball goal I set. I had, I had cerebral palsy. Making a varsity baseball team at the time I made that goal, I thought that's near impossible to do. And I was able to do it. So I thought, why not set another goal for myself? Why not set a goal that I am college material? So I enrolled into a junior college because that was the only place that would accept me at the time. I got myself a math tutor, a regular tutor, went to the math lab. I did everything necessary to increase my grade point average. And I was able to increase my grade point average from barely a 2.0 all the way to 3.5, where I was able to graduate, uh, where I was able to transfer rather to a four-year university where I was able to graduate. And I so wanted to go back to that principal and say, see, see, you were wrong. I was college material. But, uh, you know, I think to myself now or at the time, I go, you know what, I probably should thank her. Because I might not have been able to hit the books as hard as I did if I didn't have her, uh, her, her, her message playing in my head over and over again that I, that I wasn't college material and wanting to prove her wrong that I was college material. So in the end, maybe that was the carrot I needed to, uh, to carry me through college. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.